is there a role in your past or several roles in your past that you think have kind of best prepared you? I know you were you were a director as well and I don't know if you, you've kind of I seen... Actually, it's, it's interestingly enough, I started my career in uh, overseas in, 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 a, in a war zone, which has actually prepared me really well because I was the... I was the senior program manager, which is, it's a COP for all intents and purposes, because I managed a training for community health workers uh, throughout Lebanon during the Civil War. And each of the community health workers played more of a role than the, your traditional community health worker, because they were the main health, uh, health provider in their village, and they would be isolated because of the security conditions. So my my um, challenge at the time was to make sure of how I can prepare them to respond to so many health needs given their isolation, given their access to uh, specialized medical care, what I can expect that community health worker to do. And that community health worker rose to the occasion like nobody's business because they were trusted by their community. So I understood the importance of working of, of building on the trust and respect of the community mm. rather than of somebody coming back. Yeah. And then I lucked out because I, afterwards, I wanted to know how USAID works. So I was the deputy chief of the Office of Health, Population, and Nutrition in Jordan. So I learned how to set up, how does the, the, our main funder, which is USAID, works? What, how does it function? How does it link? the mission with, with, with Washington, how do, how do I use the resources and market my portfolio to grow it? And I, I understood the, the, the challenges they live with because we forget that, you know, we forget that USAID has so many rules that guide mm -hmm. what they do. So it's, I understood the, the, how complex and how difficult the role is and I, I understood the cycle as well of where you can sell an idea, of when, how long it takes to, to take through the system before you get the funding, and how you can't really change in, in midstream, and sometimes you are luckier with certain activities than others. And then afterwards, I was in many different, I played many different roles. I worked on bilaterals, I worked on global projects that are centrally funded, and they each have their own. And I worked a lot with supporting our COPs. Interestingly enough, on this project, I started as the director of the project and then became the COP of the project. And we have a very unique approach. We really are, um, we wanna make sure that our projects start well. So what we do is we really link uh, a, an expert in the topic and an expert in somebody that brings a lot of management and technical expertise with the COP. And we link them really, really closely at the start of the project because our experience have taught us that this is when projects either launch properly or they don't. We also have supporting the director a uh, what we call a project management unit. And they're the groups that really actually interact with all of the support services that we need as a project. So we're not trying to reach out to contracts and explain everything from start to finish or going out to compliance and explain. We have a project management unit led by a very highly seasoned professional who is able to represent the field. Yeah. So I, I, this is really, for me, it's very, very successful. And I always say that group who sits in headquarters and supports us are sort of the, 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 um, the forgotten heroes because nobody yeah. sees them. Yeah. And everybody basically always tells me, you know, you're doing a great job, you're doing a great job. And I'm always saying, I'm not, I'm just leading an amazing group and I'm being supported by an amazing group.